Hey there folks, this is Ian. I am an artist at Pingua and today we're going to be talking about making comics in Krita and in particular using inherited alpha and clipping groups. So many of the aspects of drawing and painting, especially when it comes to making comics in Krita, they can be made easier and quicker by using image clipping and masking. The clipping typically defines a workable area of your image using multiple layers and then removes anything outside of that area, so you're clipping it out whereas masking allows you to limit actions to a defined workable area within a single layer. Creative provides easy and non-destructive means to create clipping layers, which means that the source image elements, they're unaffected by the clipping, and the effect can be toggled on or off. Uh, other programs, sometimes when you we apply clipping effects and masking effects, it actually changes the content of that. Krita basically makes an image inside of an image that allows you to work on those without destroying the overall picture. So using the comic page that we set up in a previous video, we're going to explore how these functions work. So this page has already had the panel lay uh, layout established, so we know where all of our panels are. Krita uses Clipping Mask a little bit differently to how Photoshop and other graphic software do. In essence, Krita is treating grouped layers as separate images within a larger image composition. So using clipping groups with this page set out, we can restrict the drawing to just the panel areas of the page and we can keep stray lines out of our gutters. So to do that, we're gonna take the contiguous selection tool, this magic wand tool here, and we're going to select the area in the panels layer. Choosing these. You can see it's just defining this white area here. I've already set this up in the previous video, but now we have this layer called panels that only includes the information within the panel area. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a group because I don't want the background to affect the alpha. I only want the panels to affect the alpha, which is the transparency or the visible area of the page. So I'm going to hit control G to move that into a group and we can call this group panels and this panel border is on top, we can toggle it off or on just to see that black line. Shift Control A will deselect. Now we're going to make a layer above panels within this panels group. So I'm gonna click the panels layer. I'm going to click new layer in the layers panel. And I'm gonna change this to sketches. Now I'm going to select a pencil tool over here and change to brush mode. Now I can draw within one of these panels and say I go outside the lines. To get rid of this, I can toggle on the stylized A, which is the inherit alpha button. And it's gonna cut out everything that is not within the panel area. I still have some in the other panels. I can always get rid of that later. And I can turn it back off. So those lines are not gone. They're just hidden because it's taking the transparency information from the layer below it. If I move the panels layer above sketches, it's just gone. Right now I'm inheriting the alpha from nothing, so nothing is visible. So I'll toggle this off. And the panels, I'll turn on. It doesn't really change anything. So I want sketches to be above panels. Anything that you're inheriting the alpha on has to be above the layer with that information. Now let's look what happens when I take it outside of this panel's group. All of them are now visible because it's taking its information not from what's in the group, but from the background layer below it, which the background layer is the entire page. If I turn that off, all of a sudden it's taking this, but it's also adding in this information. So I'm going to keep it in that group so it's not affected by the other layers. And that is how a clipping group works. You can also create groups within groups, which can further like subdivide your page into small areas. So if I go into panels and I use my contiguous selection tool, I'm going to click on this. So I gotta turn this off first because it tries to select based on everything visible. I'm going to select this area and I'm going to hit control C to copy and then control V. And then I'm going to hit control G to put that in a second group. And so this one would be panel three. And if I make my sketch in this group above panel three, I'll turn it on. 
I'll turn on inherited alpha. And now it's removed the drawings that even went into the adjacent panel. It's restricting my drawing just to the area within panel three. Now, if you want, you can create single panel clipping groups for every panel on the page and just keep the art contained to those single panels. So that's one way that you can break up your work. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about masking. Here I have uh, an image that I've drawn in panel three of a moth sitting on a, a wizard's finger. Um, I have the inks here. And then I have a series of flats that I've made and you notice they all inherit the alpha of this panel three. So I have my background. I have some flats for the main image. I have some flats for the underwings and some flats for the upper wings. Now I want to use some masking effects so I can make the wings on this moth slightly transparent. So for that, I'm going to do a masking layer. So to make a masking layer, you select the layer that you want to mask. So in this instance, I'm going to turn off the top wings and go flats two, which is my bottom wings. Now in the new layers panel, beside it, there's a little drop down. So I can click that and roll it out. So now we have a bunch of different mask types. Transparency controls the opacity. A filter mask will let you apply filters to an area without actually changing that um, area with the filter. It's again, toggleable, non-destructive. Colorize mask, which will let you change the colors within a selected area. A transform mask, which will let you make changes to the size and deformation of that area. And then you can also do a local selection mask, which if you've used the selection tools, that will make a masking layer out of that selection. But for now, we just want transparency. And now it's opened up a little mask in a subgroup below flats two. So this only applies to the flats two layer. And you'll notice on the left that my color selector has turned into just black and white. And the reason for that is that it's going to take its information in amounts of opacity. I'm gonna take this tool here and if I color over the area, it's doing it to whatever percent gray that is. So that's the percentage that I'm going to be able to see through there. So if I want this a little more intense, I'm gonna make a darker color transparency is more intense or less intense sorry uh, as you go towards white it gets more solid not drag hides out so we can see a little bit of the image below but still I want that a little weaker and a nice thing with masking is if I change my tool I can draw on this dynamically so if I want some areas that are more translucent and some that are more opaque like say I want those center dots to be very strong I can color those in and make them a bit stronger. And if I want the outside areas to be more transparent, just use a darker color and I can see through them more. So now I can do the same thing with my top wing right now because it has full alpha, it's covering everything beneath. So I'm gonna click it. I'm going to select a transparency mask. Now I can draw over, make my tool a bit larger. I can see the wings beneath. So that's transparency masks in action. One more tool you have is something called preserve alpha. And I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to go to flats three. I'm going to make a new layer above it. Say I wanted to work on the eyes of this, but I want to work on them independently of the rest of the image. So I'm going to draw like my base color. I'm going to draw a new eye, color it in. base tone and this one here Just up a little bit now if I tick on this little checkerboard up in the top toolbar that is the preserve alpha so say I take a different color and I draw a line through the eye well I started my line outside of the eye but it's restricted any 
changes that I make to just the area that has preserve alpha. So it's like uh, inherited alpha, but only for an active layer. It's not using any other layers to determine that alpha inheritance. So just keeping it to this one. So I can color in here. And I don't have to worry about being too careful and going outside the lines because it won't. So those are a few tools that you can use to make your time management a little more efficient when you are working in Krita, particularly when you're making comics in Krita. So take some time to experiment and familiarize yourself with the different types of masks and uh, clipping groups. And until next time, keep drawing. Bingo.